welcome to the Wave of the World podcast. As usual, I'm your host, Jacob Bodega, and to the left of me, I'd like to introduce the magic mama, the boundless badass creatrix, the designer, the creator, the plant mama herself, Ashley Turner. Oh my God, that is the best introduction I've ever had. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. This this isn't a formal interview. You... Uh, <laughs> I know. I was thinking about. It. I was like, should I ask him questions? I was like, no, I'm the guest, so like he's gonna ask me questions. Oh, feel free to do whatever you want. The whole podcast is the freestyle. Obviously, I have cool. things that I I'd, I'd like to talk about. It's cool if we don't get there, but either way, here we go. Yeah. Um. So. I wanted both of us to speak on our friendship and how it came to be. We, um, me and Ashley have been friends since 2016, right? Yep, Mm -hmm. I think so. So five years now. Um, Mm -hmm. We were already talking about it, but how did we meet? Um, Well, we were both, no, sophomores in interior design at the school that we went to, MTSU. Um, and you sat next to me. No, and me. <laughs> I mean, okay, wait, just kidding. I cleaned your desk for you. And you were like, wow, this girl can clean a desk. I'm gonna sit next to her because that'll benefit me. No, I'm just playing. But you were, for some universal force, put you next to me. And our friendship blossomed from my items always being on your desk and you being okay with it (laughs) to expound on the desk situation it was basically like mega desk in the office whenever jim the quiet jim whenever he went away for extended periods of time dwight would combine all of the desks and use all of all of the space all of the computers all of the things just Imagine that, but Jim never leaving. I was always there, and Ashley's stuff was everywhere. But I can't always. Um, yeah. I can't harp harp on somebody for like how they process things creatively. But like I was telling Ashley before we started, uh, that I've always admired her one, her work ethic; two, her her like aptitude to create and. Mm-hmm how she carries herself regardless of who's around or what situation she's in. I've always admired that about her. Mm, Um, Anyway, I was saying about you, like you were always this strong, silent, like mysterious type in the class. You were one of two men in class, um, the only straight man in class. And you have this soft spoken, like calm demeanor and you were by the grace of whatever placed directly in the middle of me and Bryce who was chaotic and that whole little cluster and Bryce and I were talking about it last night how like both because both you and Charlotte who sat across from you were these super hardworking, you know kind of once you got into your groove you were like, don't talk to me. Not that you ever said that, but that was kind of like the vibe that you gave off. Like, that's I'm exactly in my zone. Leave that's me what alone. I was saying in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't talk to me. Oh my God, leave me alone. Um, it's, kind of, but, it's kind of like then, whenever you like, you get like a thought going or get an idea going and like someone like interrupts you and then you're like, what was I doing? And you were like on a roll. That, that to me is like the most frustrating thing. Like you don't get mad at the person that interrupted you but you get mad at yourself because you can't get back on that track that you were going on. Cause it's like, boom, 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 stop. Yeah, it's like hard stop too. And you know, like actually like I read somewhere that it takes like 20 minutes, I think, I don't know, fact check me on that. 20 minutes to like get your focus back from where it was. Mm -hmm. Like if your phone goes off or someone interrupts you like it takes a full 20 minutes to get back into that flow. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, me and Bryce were both this like chaotic, explosive, eccentric energy all the time. And like you and Charlotte, like, I think you guys are the reason we actually got through interior design school because without you guys, like, like 
if I were to have sat next to Bryce, I wouldn't have gotten anything done. And like you guys were our anchors. Like, okay, they're not goofing off. So we should probably stop goofing off. And like, just these people to remind us like, okay, come back down to earth for a little bit. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking about school, since we both graduated over Zoom, um, Mm -hmm. what are you currently working on and how has the pandemic affected you job wise since everything shut down basically because yeah our school semester just got cut off right in the middle of it yeah our senior semester too and I don't know about you but like to me it almost feels like I didn't graduate Mm -hmm. like I I remember getting my my cap in the mail and I was I was almost depressed like my mom was like oh my god it's your cap like cool and I was like okay like what what do you want me to do with this <laughs> like yeah. I don't have anywhere to wear it to I'm not gonna wear it in an outfit well maybe I'll wear it in an outfit I don't know but um but yeah no since then I so I moved back in with my parents over spring break so mm-hmm. like right when school canceled I like went home and it was funny too because like my stepdad being a doctor he has been he was watching the coronavirus like unfold since the last December (laughs) and he said to me one night he was like I don't care where you're at what you're doing who you're with if we text you and tell you to come home you get in the car and you go Mm -hmm. and like from that I literally like because he was like everyone's going to be watching the tv when we go on lockdown and you're gonna have an extra two minutes ahead of everybody before the close of state borders and you know blah 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 this like and if your car gets stopped you're gonna have to walk through the woods and Jacob I'm telling you like I was like okay yeah cool got a duffel bag I made a go bag I got a compass I got a whistle I bought some boots I got some nice socks in case I needed to be outside for some reason like I put my hammock in there like I was like yo I'm about to you know go walking dead on this and have to cross the river and get to my house and be covered in mud. And anyway, so I've been with them since March Um, and they're both immunocompromised. My stepdad has type one diabetes and my mom has um, a heart condition and Mm -hmm. they being doctors or my stepdad being a doctor, like the private, we have a private practice and it's a small practice Um, and like, PPE, which I'm sure we all are familiar with is uh, personal protective equipment, all went to the major hospitals in the area. Like our facility can't even get PPE the way that we have gotten PPE in the past. Cause there's like, you know, big medical vendors and you can say like, oh, I'm in medicine, like blah, blah, send it to me. Like, um, but now like the prices, like I think we could get 20 masks for like $200, huh. which is insane. Mm -hmm. Um, and like the amount, like, I mean, like we're all hopefully relatively used to wearing masks now, but like in a medical setting, like you walk into a room with a patient, you have a new mask, you walk out, you ditch that mask, you get another mask. So like between one patient and, you know, a doctor and assistant, you can easily go through like five masks before they leave, Mm -hmm. if not more. So we, you know, they went to telemedicine and moving everything like online. And because of their condition, I can't be exposed to anybody because if I'm exposed and I bring it home, they could die. So this is my really long way of saying I've been unemployed since March. (laughs) 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 And all the reasons why. Um, And like, I've looked for online work here, there, like I got a job with, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Havenly, but it's like a online interior design service kind of thing. So I got a job with them, which turned out to be absolutely baloney. Like they were asking for like three digital inspiration boards and then like a final inspiration board plus any kind of edits that your client wants you to do on it. You're supposed to be available to your client like 24 seven. And you could only source things from their database, which seems like, okay, like that makes it a little bit easier. The way they set their database up, Jacob, I wanted to scream at it. Like it was like, 
I'll give you an example. I was like looking for like a pink chair or like I was looking for chairs and I'd scroll down and I'd see a pink chair and I'd be like, oh, pink chairs are cool. Let me look for pink chairs. So I'd, you know, go into the color thing and click pink and no chairs would show up. It would just be this one pink, like, um, like beanbag or something. And I was like, how do you expect me to work in these conditions? <laughs> but to say all that, like they only were guaranteeing like $40 per client after that so it was like several several hours worth of work and like I know you are familiar with like what it takes to really like design something and get all the pictures high quality and crop them and put it in to photoshop or put it into InDesign or like powerpoint like it is not a quick process mm -hmm. so I was like I'm not gonna do that and I've just kind of been kicking it I started um my art page which I'm excited for because I wanted to have like an Instagram handle that I could market as more professional mm -hmm. and kind of show off who I am, not in my personal life and like artistically um, and that I can like show to employers and I don't know, maybe get discovered or something. I don't know, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, other than that, like I literally, like I haven't seen anyone since last March it's just been me and my mom and my stepdad which is great <laughs> so blink twice if you're okay <laughs> I'm okay no it really is like I I feel very lucky because not everyone has a relationship with their parents like I do and like the idea of like moving back in with your parents might you know be terrifying and you might feel like you know, you've regressed in your life. But I also like within this solitude, I came on this epiphany, like I like my mom and I like my stepdad. And like, if I like these people, why wouldn't I want to spend, you know, as much time as I could with them? Because there's going to be a point in my life where I'm not going to get to spend any more time with them. And this whole idea of like, you're not successful if you're still living with your parents at 24 or 25 or 26, like, I think it's baloney and I think it's mm -hmm. sold to us by capitalism and, and you know maybe that's my way of coping but I like the outlook that I've found from it and I, I'm enjoying myself I really am so you know it's not all bad I don't like that mentality either just because um we're not all on first of all we all don't have the same jobs two mm -hmm. we all work at our own pace regardless mm -hmm. of what our job is we all we all do that um but speaking about working this man seems like he does not need to work whatsoever um i wanted to get your thoughts on elon musk passing jeff bezos as the richest man in the world ah oh, okay um i think in general that amount of money is insane to have just like, I mean, good job, good for you, but what are you going to do with it? And I think it's kind of backwards in our country that we, we all, you know, like, what is the American dream anymore, right? Like everyone wants to be rich and famous and have yachts and do this and do that. And like, most of us are closer to being homeless than we are to ever being a millionaire. Mm -hmm. um, and with that said, like we you know, for lack of a better word, like worship these people for being able to obtain all this wealth and really have like limitless possibilities. And like, that's what we want. Like we want these limitless possibilities. We want to do whatever we can. And unfortunately that costs money. But my point with that is, I don't know. I think it's, I mean, cool. Good for you. I hope you do something good with it. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I think like, I mean, Tesla, I kind of feel, hmm, I, okay, I'm going to be honest and say that I don't know too much about either of them, but I like Elon <laughs> Musk better than Jeff Bezos. I feel like Elon is on this precipice of like putting us in the future, like the future we imagined 30 years ago where everything is stainless steel and we have flying cars and like that kind of future. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Jeff Bezos is just 
like a rat and is just like hoarding things, <laughs> you know? And like and like everyone works at Amazon and you know, like it's you see like want like want ads or like for hire ads like in Amazon all the time and like everyone, you know, uses that as an opportunity to make money, which I think is awesome, but it's also like, you know, the kind of place that works you to your bones and it's not it's not a great place to work and it's available and it's unfortunate that something so available is also a place where you know employees are exploited and you know you just use for labor and it sucks Mm -hmm. um but I don't know I like Elon a little bit he's my space daddy (laughs) (laughs) so I'm a little biased but I you know I hope he does something good with it I hope you know it can be recycled back into the community somehow I mean like somebody with that much money could be like you know you could do so much good with it like what's the point of holding on to it you know so with with that being said two questions one how much money is too much and two what would you do with that amount of money now he does have like a certain amount of like cash like readily available but his net worth is 183 billion with a B. Okay. <laughs> With a B. Um, what was the first question again? How much money is too much money? Because I've seen um, different graphics presented on like Instagram or Facebook or whatever of mm-hmm. the the value. Well, first of all, I, when I was I was in Atlanta last month, and I passed a billboard, and it said that the like the world debt like combining everyone's debt to each other was somewhere within the trillions. And it was like three digits, which Mm -hmm. doesn't really make sense to me. Like there's not enough money circulating to pay for all the debt that everybody owes each other. So like if the world is in debt, like like who who do we owe? Exactly. Where does it go? Like who are we paying here, you know? And then, um, what was I saying? I was talking about the world uh, debt, Elon Musk, Tesla. Never mind. Go ahead. Answer the question. <laughs> okay. How much money is too much money? Um, okay. So I live by the mantra of it's always coming, it's always going. And <laughs> partly because I'm broke as a joke right now having a great time. Uh, but like, like, I think in order to, you know, make money, you have to spend money and you can't always hold on to it. And there's things that, you know, besides your basic necessities, there's things worth spending money on. And like money to me is like the root of all awesome. Like you, which I got from a book, by the way, not not coming from my brain. I'm reading a lot of books <laughs> these days. But anyway, um, but like, money you can't buy happiness but you can buy a lot of things that make you happy and it's not things in excess but they it opens up opportunities and I think I don't have an exact number for how much money is too much money um, because I much, feel like I I should have posed the question differently how much money is too much for you personally oh like you actually turn your life living with mom and stepdad oh well how much well that's such a loaded question though because obviously i could do a lot with a lot of money right now and it would be great Mm -hmm. how much and and i don't want to give a low number because i don't want to tell the universe that like you know i think i'm worth less than i am (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know Um, but i don't know i mean like i feel like if we were making upwards of like $500,000 a year and not spending that same amount of money on whatever, then I feel like that would be too much. Like if you have more than you can spend, that's too much. Because I feel like the whole point and concept of money is if you have it, you not give it away per se, but you, you put it back and it comes back and it's this cycle. And I think that's where you know Bezos and maybe Elon are messing up this cycle is by mm-hmm. not putting that money back into where it needs to go. 
like um so like at the beginning of march or april i forget which one it was but jeff bezos he he became the richest man in the world then he got divorced so he had to give half of that money to his wife who helped mm -hmm. him create the concept of amazon she ended up giving last week um she ended up giving an hbcu i think in like North Carolina or something. She gave him $25 million. And their endowment before that, it was like two to three million dollars, mm -hmm. which to me makes absolutely no sense. Like Harvard and Yale and UCLA and uh oh let's forget all those. UCLA's endowment alone, which is the money that they receive from alumni donors blah 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 whatever whatever amount it may be their endowment is larger than any other or all the hbcus combined which to me is like it doesn't actually like physically make sense when you try adding up the numbers mm -hmm. but like for, for me personally i'll answer my own question yeah uh, i would say too much money for like a, I guess it depends on your situation. I am a man, no children, not married. I would say $2 million. Anything over $2 million, I don't know what I would do with. Like $2 million in one sum, or is it like you're still making money and it gets back up to $2 million and like that? $2 million made over the course of a year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, at that point you, you open opportunities though, where you're like, okay, I, I do have too much money. What can I do with it? Like who needs it more than I do? Mm -hmm. And Which, I think like that, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, la, la, la. <laughs> uh, but which I think like is where, you know, a lot of people mess up and, and it's the greed that comes along with it too, I guess. And like, no doubt, like if you, obviously you earned it because you have it, you know, whether you exploit people in the process or you don't, you still earned it. And like, that's cool. I guess you get to do whatever you want with it, but it's like, you know, you, we, didn't we teach, didn't we teach our kids to share like a long time ago? They're, they're being taught different things in, um, in private schools and different schools. But I did want to present this news topic to you because I'm working on my transitions. If y'all have been listening for over a year, I'm working on it, I promise. So You're doing speaking, great. <laughs> speaking about basically giving away money. There was a 12-year-old girl in California who raised $500,000 for a homeless man who returned um, her grandmother's wallet. <clears throat> so okay. the woman, the girl's name is Michaela Gunard um, and the the homeless man his name was Sean Curry okay he was looking for food outside of a dumpster and he found a missing wallet belonging to Michaela's grandmother so she started a GoFundMe page and now it's at fifty thousand dollars but what are your thoughts what are my thoughts I think Okay. I think that's amazing because a crowdfunding and like fundraising is hard. Mm -hmm. I've tried it. It's hard. Um, and I think it's an, an amazing initiative for someone her age to take. And especially that, you know, she sees somebody in need mm -hmm. and she says, I'm going to do something about this. And that's huge. Like that's one small step in, you know, in a life of activism and you know fighting for the underdog and that kind of thing and i think that's awesome i think it's awful that we live in a world where we have to crowdfund for homeless people to mm. survive that a child has to crowdfund for homeless people to survive or like um crowdfund to pay for a surgery or mm. you know like the whole concept <laughs> of St. Jude's Hospital. You know, you see those commercials where, you know, oh, we're sick kids, give us $20 a month so we can keep saving these kids from dying 
of mm -hmm. cancer. I think in concept, that's great. But at the same time, it's also exactly what I think a lot of the younger generation and like liberals or left-leaning people or progressives are trying to accomplish for everyone. And like, at this point, it's like, it's virtuous to, it's to, to give somebody money that doesn't have it when you have, and like, you can feel good about it. Like I donate to St. Jude's, you know, every month, I, not me personally, I'm just saying in general, like you can say that and you can deduct it from your taxes and you get a pat on the shoulder when that whole concept is for lack of a better word, socialism, you know, like getting other people to pay for what you need because you can't afford it. And like a lot of people are fighting against that when it's already happening just in like a covert way to make the people donating feel better about what they're doing. It's like, let me give you this choice. And like, you know, sometimes people don't make the best choices. So like, wow, <laughs> like, this wouldn't be a problem in the first place if we had socialized medicine. <laughs> you know? Sorry, I don't know. I feel like I went off a little off topic, but my point stands no, is like fine. I think I think it's awesome that she did that, but I also think it sucks that we live in a world where that has to happen. Like we live in the the richest country in the world and people are living on the streets and and starving and we have food what's it called food deserts like in mm -hmm. the midwest where you know there's no fresh food or like your only store is like a dollar general and we can't get good food at a dollar general and like it's it's just so it's so backwards mm -hmm. that we have the resources but we don't share them freely we're not eager to lift each other up like if it's if it's going to get make us money or make us look good or make us feel better like we will pick that path over the the just not justified righteous maybe or just like the the good path the path that you should be on as a good person <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't think i was thinking about this the other day i don't think anybody is inherently good or inherently bad but i do mm -hmm. think that the, the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis first of all whenever you get caught up in your like daily life doing anything you can like kind of let some emotions and like your clear-minded judgment like sit by the wayside while you try to just get things done so um i i agree with you for the for the most part Mm -hmm. I was actually listening to a podcast earlier this morning um, and they were talking about like the Stanford prison experiment. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that? Not at all. Okay. So essentially, everybody. essentially what it is, is like back in, oh my God, what year was it? I don't know. Back in like the sixties or the late fifties or maybe the seventies. I don't know. A long time ago, um, there was this a psychology professor and he did this experiment um, in the basement of Stanford. And basically he had like, um, let's say like 20 students, 20 subjects. And like they flipped a coin and like half of them were guards and half of them were inmates. And he was trying to prove that like authority in the prison system is what causes like um the prison system to be so bad and like people will lean towards a more aggressive stance if they're in a um like position of authority mm -hmm. and there's a lot of myths like that this particular podcast debunks because it basically like the accepted idea behind this study was that because the students, half the students were in uniform, they started making all the students that were inmates do like really bad things and were like punishing them and like putting bags on their head, like only because they were in this position of power. Mm -hmm. And it's not exactly true. Like that did happen, but there was a lot of um, influencing from the scientists and like saying like, you need to be a little, like one kid was like, you know, I'm not comfortable with doing this. And the scientist literally was like, I need you to be more like a guard in a prison. So basically taking the stereotypical idea of a prison and 
you know, placing it and saying like, oh yeah, because they're in positions of authority, that's why they're being so rude and awful to these people. When in fact, it wasn't like that. And it's not necessarily like the authority. It's, it depends on like the background of these people, like why they're there, like what kind of people would sign up for an experiment like this. And like another experiment they did later was that people who answered this, um, what's it called, this ad for this experiment, they personality tested them and they lean more aggressive than your regular person would. Um, But my point being is that like, it's like, we always, we have this argument of like nature versus nurture. Are you naturally like that? Where you grow, did you grow up in this environment? But it's also, you know, has so much more to do with your exactly what you're saying, like your state of being at that present time. And, you know, what is, is, are you uncomfortable? Is something annoying you? Are you under stress right now? Like, and I kind of forgot what we were talking about before this <laughs> Stanford prison experiment and people being inherently good or inherently bad, which is not what you think. Um, but yeah, and it's true. Like exactly what, basically what I'm saying is you're right. Like it depends on a lot of factors and it can't just be boiled down to are you a good person or are you a bad person it's like who are you with what are the you know what kind of people are around you are they good people are they bad people are they attacking you are they not attacking you like there's it's so much more than just like this is how I was raised or not you know yeah so I don't know where I was going with that (laughs) sorry (laughs) if I talk too much just like just give me a little you know no (laughs) it's fine this is why it's a lot easier to go back and forth um bouncing conversation off um with people than you know me just talking about myself reading y'all but um what else do we have today so we're definitely going to do a mount rushmore but we'll do that in about five minutes but i wanted to take a little break just to let you all know again i want to reiterate that a couple of people have um, given me some feedback on the podcast, um, what, what I need to work on, when when I need to work on it. So just putting this out there, you can catch me here every at the beginning and end of every month on Thursdays. I'm sticking to that for the whole year. And you can also join the Patreon. You can join for as low as $2 a month. You get early access. You get um access to uh merchandise drops whenever i decide to do those um and (laughs) sometimes i even do extra videos for the patreon they get exclusive content that i don't put out for the rest of the world um shout out to everybody on patreon supporting but other than that let's go to do you know who dogface is no have you seen the TikTok of the dude skateboarding down the highway, listening to dreams, drinking cranberry juice? Yes. Yeah. That is who Dogface is. <laughs> okay, cool. I like him. <laughs> this man, he probably had like the biggest glow up of 2020 and it's continuing to 2021 because Joe Biden invited him to the inauguration. And what? just off of his video that's at like 3 million views now, this man has bought a car. This man has bought a house. He signed a deal with Ocean Spray. All for skateboarding down a highway, listening to some Fleetwood Mac. Um, I mean, it, it was a vibe though. Like it, it is. We all needed that in that moment, I think. Like he came up at the right time. <laughs> it for was just- everyone, like sorry go ahead it was just I still I to this day I'll never understand the just like the concept of money and debt in like the world I will never understand the concept of virality how it happens why it happens and how quickly it happens it just makes no sense to me well I think like in this case it's something that we can all relate to 
you know, like maybe we're not all longboarders or, you know, fans of ocean spray, but we can all relate to <laughs> <laughs> the feeling of just like that carefree, I'm going down the interstate on my longboard. I'm listening to Fleetwood Mac. I'm going to drink me some ocean spray. It's all good, baby, baby, that kind of thing. And like, especially with everything going on, I think it really was like the perfect, like timing, I think with vir virality or something going viral, like it's gotta be right place, right time. And in his case, it was right place, right time. And we all needed that moment of just like, take a breather, drink some ocean spray, sing mm -hmm. a song, you know what I mean? Like life, like so much is going on, but all you can control is like where you're at in the moment. And when we see him riding on that longboard or skateboard, we're in that moment with him. <laughs> and collectively, the whole world is in that moment drinking ocean spray. <laughs> and it was just like a reprieve and it's happy. It's like the whole reason why cats are so popular on the internet mm -hmm. is because we see it and they make us happy and it releases dopamine and serotonin in our brains. And it's, it's a phenomenon really, but like that's why we keep coming back is because it's like that little moment of like, you know, away from doom scrolling and away from everything that's going on around you. It's like a mental break seeing somebody do that. <laughs> Which, I think it's awesome though. Yeah, that's why I've spoken about it a number of times um, on this podcast and with people in conversation. I feel like there should be a news outlet that specifically only reports on good news because a lot of our news First of all, it repeats the same thing across a bunch of different platforms. But the reason that there are a bunch of different platforms is because people try to manipulate headlines and make it sound differently than what it actually is. Mm -hmm. But rarely do you see good news for more than like two to three minutes. Like if say there's 10 segments on a newscast within an hour, one mm -hmm. out of those 10 might be good news and that's maybe that's maybe but the other yeah. time they'll just be like yeah three people were shot uh this grocery store got robbed um trump said something what whatever the case may be like it, yeah. yeah it never yeah. stops <laughs> like it's always around us like all the time and like you know arguably i understand it from you know sensationalism and like violence is you know, we're kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? We are desensitized mm. to violence in America. And like me and my stepdad talk about this a lot because it's, it's, it's weird because we are this country that is like Christian based and like, you know, no sex before marriage and don't teach kids about the bodies because they're going to go and have sex. And like, because we like, inhibit our children and ourselves from diving into these real, very real portions of our lives. Like at the same time, America has like upped the violence, like PG 13 movies are about war and about, you know, fighting and, you know, Jackie Chan. And I mean, I love Jackie Chan, but you know what I mean? Like it's all just like <laughs> action movies and like explosions and let's do this and let's kill people. And like, I was trying we, to follow you where you were going. You, you <laughs> said, no sex before marriage, you know, Christian based country, violence, war, gun, drug, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> no hate on Jackie Chan, but you know what I mean? Like, just, I, you know, just, I, I mean, we, violence is fed to us through a feeding tube in this country, and violence is more accepted than sex. Mm -hmm. and it's like we're we're used to it now and it's like no big deal now even though like it is a big deal like we're we're just used to it you know what I mean we're sensitized to it that's why we can have 3,000 people dying a day and we're like oh, oh, okay just another day you know like it doesn't mean as much to us anymore mm -hmm. um so I understand like why like news would want to focus on that because it attracts views and like the worse, the better, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. 
at the same time, you have to remember, like, when watching this, just because you don't see it happening, as much bad stuff that there is in the world, there is good stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it's still, like, as just as someone dies every day, someone is born every day. And just as someone is hurt, someone is feeling good. And, like, you have to just, you know, tell yourself that it is going on, even if you can't see it. On another note, um, John Krasinski, who plays Jim in The Office, has a little channel called SGN, which is some good news, where yeah. he goes on and talks about some good news. <laughs> so I, I follow a couple of um, mental health pages. I'll try to tag them whenever I get done editing. I know one of them is Tank's Good News, and then the other one is the uh, the Depression Bible. It's a real, those are two really good um, pages that I follow because I had to kind of like you, I feel like you become what you surround yourself with. So mm -hmm. in our social media timelines, if you're, if you see a hundred posts a day and whatever they may be, I feel like they will in turn like make or not make you but influence how you go about your day if that makes sense 100 percent. i think i can't remember exactly where i heard it but i was like kind of searching for the same thing like uh motivational instagrams and you know self-help for lack of a better word and things like that and something that stuck out to me was you know you are what you eat and mm -hmm. that can be you know, with food, like taken literally, but it also means everything that you consume, you are. And like, if you fill your head with, um, you know, things that don't align with who you are or who you want to be, you're, even if you don't want to be those things, your trajectory is still focused in that direction. Mm -hmm. So like this particular person was like, if anything on your feed if it does not make you feel safe, inspired, um, happy, get rid of it. And like, after that, I, I literally went through and like every post I saw, I didn't like, I was like, whoop, block, whoop, block. <laughs> even some people I know, I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. I like you as a person. I just don't want to see your life on my feed. And it was kind of weird because I kind of felt like I was shutting them out in real life, but it's my feed. And that sounds so weird, but really like that is what I consume and I want everything I consume as much as possible to be things that inspire me and serve me and make me feel safe. And like, it honestly, like I've gone back and forth because I followed some shitty accounts on Instagram for fun because we all do, but like it, it changes the way like I use Instagram. Like I stopped doom scrolling as much. And when it was just things that like didn't like that caught my attention, but didn't keep my attention, like I spent less time on it. And when I did go on there, I, it was mo more intentional than it was just to kind of like kill time. Good I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10, recommend, go through, delete everyone you don't like. No apologies. All right. Um, so with that being said, um, we're gonna wrap up this episode. Um, but we're going to do it with a Mount Rushmore and just like the last one, um, with Katie, y'all go listen to that one. Cause that episode was funny. Um, but I wanted to, now I'm not a plant person, but I have one soul orchid that I have not killed. So proud of you. I'm so proud of it. I'd be talking to no, that. No, that's awesome. I talk to the orchid, not every day. I talk to it probably like every other day. Water it once a week. Proud of myself. The leaves are still alive. But before this one, I killed the succulent. But that's not the here nor there. Uh, but I wanted to get a Mount Rushmore of plants from you. So just your top four. Um, you can explain okay. why. But you go and then I'll do my four. So like my top four fave plants. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, pothos number one, because it comes in so many different varieties and mm -hmm. it's super easy to propagate. 
and it's it grows super super long I have I have one like in my house right now that's probably like five feet long and like if you don't know what pothos is it's devil's ivy it's like the basic vining looking plant Mm -hmm. they're awesome I love them they're the only ones I haven't killed Um, so pothos and then monstera because that's a staple like just if you google house plant anything like you're gonna see a monstera I google it right now (laughs) yeah yeah you should you'll recognize it too it's like tropical looking and it's got slits in its leaves a monstera deliciosa it's kind of sexy in the name okay that's number two Number three is going to be a money tree um, because I have a personal connection to a money tree in my house and it almost died and I brought it back to life. And at this point, like the leaves are growing so big, they're bigger than my head. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I think it's so cool. Um, And then number four, I'd probably say is a Hindu rope, specifically a variegated Hindu rope. And variegation just means it's like a mutation um, where some of its leaves don't have color. And then like some of its leaves where it would be green, it's white. And it's like this really pretty, it looks like a rope. It's like this like tangled looking mess thing that grows really, really long. Oh wait, can I have one more? I forgot about one. You either have to get rid of one that you already said. Okay, I'm getting or... I'm getting rid of the Hindu rope. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Hindu rope. Um, string of pearls that that's that's my last one that's a good one I've never been able to keep one alive but (laughs) (laughs) I love them my my mom actually like several times now like because they're hard to find like in you know whole plant sizes and they'll Mm -hmm. be in like you'll see like a succulent arrangement that has two or three string of pearls my mom several times now has like prop lifted them for me to have and like keep and like just broke it off and put it in her pocket and took her with her (laughs) and uh, I've killed all of them great i don't know so my my top four um uh, forgive me if i don't know the um the scientific name of them like i said who, who at the beginning of this episode she's the plant mom um but number one orchid just because it's my guy it's over there hasn't died and i don't know i've i don't really feel any differently like <laughs> I feel like plants are supposed to make you feel like a certain way. Like mm-hmm. I feel like different plants provide different um, energy for you. But mm-hmm. I just I don't know. I'm just happy that it's alive, and I'm assuming that it's happy too. Um, yeah. Number two would be so the succulent that I killed. I, I just looked up the the scientific term for it. It's called an echeveria. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a mix of that and Hawthor- Hawthoria? Hawthornia? Hawthornia. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> it was a mixture of both of those and mm-hmm. I overwatered it so it died. Mm. But still my favorite because they look I don't I don't know what it is about it, but if it like brought like a calming almost like what lavender does mm-hmm. to like like calm your senses that's what it would do for me um number three i would say it would be a bamboo palm just because i like i like the length of them um and i think they they fill up a space even though it doesn't really matter what space is in i i just feel like it you know it just provides the room with a lot of greenery, whereas if you had a bunch of small plants, it, I feel like it would be too much. Mm-hmm. And then I love my last it. one, just because I'm a fan of the Karate Kid, speaking about Jackie Chan, is <gasps> the bonsai plant. Just because mm-hmm. I like, I feel the that the way that they grow, the I feel like it's very abstract, and they I don't know they just to me they're like they're like little women like dancing in the wind yeah so I think like I could be wrong but um so I think like bonsai is what you do to the plant and you can bonsai generally like any plant so like I, I got this bonsai kit for Christmas and it was just like these 
four different types of trees and you shape them and kind of bind them sometimes. And sometimes you like, if a branch is cutting, is like coming out and somewhere that you don't want it to, you just like cut it off and you mm -hmm. make it grow the way that you want it to. So it's kind of like an art form. Like my dad, my stepdad bonsai the trees in our front yard, like, okay. <laughs> and they're big, but they're bonsai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's really cool. Like I've actually seen people who bonsai like, um, like uh, cannabis. Mm -hmm. So they, they alter it to look a certain way and then it's little colas grow and these like, you know, exactly where they need to grow and it's real cute. So if you like that, you should learn it in bonsai everything. We're, we're working on the orchid. <laughs> the bonsai the orchid. <laughs> as long as we don't kill the orchid, then we'll focus on another plant. But yeah, orchids uh, are hard too. So snaps to you for that. <laughs> Um, thank you again, Ashley, for being on. Um, I really appreciate it. I always love a good conversation. Like I said, you can always catch me here every at the beginning and end of every month on Thursday. Is there anywhere that the people should follow you for anything that you have upcoming? Oh, yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Whiskey Sour. W H I I S K Y sour. I know that's not how you spell whiskey. I'm an idiot. Just go with it. Um, that's my art page. That's where I put all my fun pictures that I take. And if you want to follow Fresh Weave too, you can because that's my other page. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to self promote, but here I am. No, so, it's okay. Thank you. That was probably me. one of the funniest things whenever I first met you and I asked you what your Instagram was. Like, you didn't even let me finish the word Instagram and you said Fresh Weave. Fresh weave. <laughs> it's just so iconic and precise and I've had it forever. I love it. So anyways, I'll see y'all next month in Black History Month, beginning of February. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you.